And so, how many have ever taken communion in their life? All right. How many have ever done it uh, under deep consideration? Got a few here. And uh, I have a message before I get to the message, and then we're going to take it. I want to look at a few scriptures together in 2 Corinthians. It's on the back of your sheet. Uh, 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians 11. And I'm going to use my old falling apart Bible. Back before they had tablets and computers, paper got wore out fast. My screen last night. So, 1 Corinthians 11, 24. And it says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So how many you know that his body was broken when he went to the cross? Amen. First Peter 2.24 says, By his stripes you were healed. So that beating he took, and, and were means that something was already happened, right? And so we can look back to, I'm getting ahead of my message, we can look back to when it happened, it happened at the cross. Amen. Does everybody have your sheets? Do we need a few extra? Anybody? We need some. We got extra. See if they can. So uh, it got points back to the cross. Amen. Yeah. When he took those stripes, how many of you know he had you on, on his mind? So if sickness was finished at the cross, and the enemy, some people will say, then why do people still get sick today? Well, who is the ruler of this, this earth until Jesus returns? Satan. Satan. But who crushed him at the cross? Christ. Christ. So the only, the only way we can crush him is if we're in Christ. Amen. We get saved. We, get, we, we give him our life. And then those things are underneath us. Then they're finished. At the cross. But if you're, and you someone will say, Well, I have been sick since I got saved. Well, the Bible says, just because uh, Satan brings it to you doesn't mean you have to own it. Right. Amen. Amen. Okay. He'll show up with all kinds of things trying to get you to take a bite and try to convince you that it belongs to you. But if something that doesn't belong to you, you can, what do you do when it shows You can't stop it from coming to your mailbox, but what do you do to it after it gets to your mailbox? Return to sender. I don't want this package. Amen? Amen? So, when he was doing this, he was telling them before he already knew what was going to happen. How many know Jesus knew what was going to happen at the cross? Mm -hmm. He was telling them, when you do this, you remember what I put my body through for you to be saved, delivered, healed, restored. And you remember me. But I believe he was also telling you remember what I did for you. You remember all the benefits that came because I went all the way for you. I, you know, he loved us when we were at our worst because he always sees us at our best. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that he, when he went down to, he didn't just hang on that cross. He went down to hell and got the keys of death, hell in the grave. And he stomped a mud hole in Satan for better, of late, better English. And then he came back and rose again on the third day. Amen. Amen. And when he did those things, how many know when he was hanging on the cross, we're going to get this, they're in your notes, he said, it is finished. Did he say some things are finished? No. So he had completed his task. He had put Satan under his feet. He had, brought, he, he, had, he had paved the way for you to have eternal life. He had paved the way for you to have a better life now. John 10.10 10 says the thief, what does Satan still come to do? Right, John 10, 10. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He, he is stupid. He's going to do his job until the day Jesus comes back. But Jesus said, I've came, you may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. How many like to have a good life? Amen. How many want like joy, Amen. peace, Amen. hope? Amen. But see, a lot of times people look at hope as something wishy-washy. If you've been here before, you've heard it. Romans 15, 13 says that he's the God of hope. That word hope means he, you can confidently anticipate the promises of God are yes and amen. amen. Right? Amen. So, and by the way, for those that are new, I, this is probably the only time you ever hear me do much preaching when I'm sitting on a stool, but I'm trying to behave this morning for a moment. <laughs> I didn't plan to, I didn't plan to uh, go this deep this morning. But uh, 
So when he said it's finished, he knew what he was talking about. When he said remember, so when you, when you take this communion this morning, he's saying you remember all those benefits that I did for you. And if you've got anything wrong, I will come and heal you. I will restore you. I will deliver you. I mean, you know, listen, I've seen people get miraculously saved. I've seen people get miraculously healed in communion service. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they were. it was not just some religious thing they did. They were remembering what Jesus did for them, and they were grateful, and they were applying that by faith to their life. Are you with me? He said, after the same manner, he also took the cup which he had supped, saying, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. How many you know his blood is more than enough? He doesn't have to be crucified again as long as we believe in him and stay in him. Now listen, nobody can yank you out of the Father's hands, but you can be a knucklehead and run off. Come on. But as long as you stay in him, how many know that blood is enough? Every time the enemy comes to accuse you, the blood is at the is there. Jesus is your lawyer at the court, and he says, nope, you ain't got nothing. That's already been blotted out. There's nothing on record. Isn't that good news? And so this morning, we're going to take some time for you to examine yourself. We're about to get there. Because if you've not applied the blood, you want to apply the blood before you come and, and do that. But, it, you know, the good thing is is that when you do, how many are ever grateful for what God's done for you? Will you give me some water? Tamer, give me that ball. You know, it's good to acknowledge where we would be without Him. Amen? How many know that's more than a religious experience? Then? For a long time, we've turned it into just a religious thing. Excuse me. And then he says, For as often as you uh, eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. It means, and to me, the Lord spoke to me, you know, hillbilly that I am. That means you don't forget the benefits that I did for you at the cross and you hold them and you reverence them and you don't let it be for nothing until the day that I come back. Mm. See, if we're, if we're remembering, if we're walking in that, you know, how many, whenever you got hope in the midst of, of a trial, when you've got joy, when you should be depressed, how many of that speaks to the world around you? Yeah. How many know that is because of what he did at the cross that was finished that you have that? And more people start seeing what was finished there. I'll keep going. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Now, this is the part a lot of people don't talk about. And unworthy means that you've got unrepented sin. You've got uh, things in your life that are not right. Uh, and you don't want to be taking the Lord's Supper without getting your right. Now, does anybody know what 1 John 1, 9 says? Amen. He's faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, last time I checked, all still means all. <laughs> So if you know that you've got sin in your life, and if you've never asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, there's no better time than a day. It's one of the most glorious things you'll ever do. But if you've got sin in your life, guess what you've got to do this morning? When we give a time to examine, you want to repent. You don't want to take, otherwise you're mocking what he did for you on the cross. Are you all still with me this morning? I told you it's probably a little different than the communion you've had. But it's powerful. So, so, but let a man examine himself. Now, did he say call for the pastor to come dig in your dirt? <laughs> no. What did he say? Examine himself. examine himself. So this morning, we're going to take a moment here pretty soon, and we're going to give you a chance to examine yourself. Now, it shouldn't take all day to figure out. I'm pretty sure the Holy... If you got the same Holy Ghost I got, He's pretty good at convicting you and you know you've been doing something you ain't supposed to be doing. So you ought to be real quick on Johnny on the spot at getting things uh, under the blood so you don't miss what God has for you this morning. Amen? Now, hopefully, the, you know, hopefully not everybody in here needs to repent, but some of you, may, everybody here does need to examine. 
Amen. And it says, So let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Does anybody want to get the get yourself under a curse from God? No. Do you realize that's what that's saying? Now listen, if you've been here on Proverbs, you see all the way back through the even the Old Testament, God made it very clear. There's a blessed life and there's a cursed life, and He said, "Here's a road map. I'm going to tell you which way to go." Because he wants everybody to have the blessed life. He doesn't want anybody. That's why he put this in here. He said, I, I know there's going to be some knuckleheads that are just going to try to slide by and they're going to really mess up their life. So I'm going to put an exclamation warning on there like they do on the warning labels on a bottle, you know. <laughs> and if some, just like a McDonald's, you know, the coffee's hot. You know, well, <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> He's like, hey, you do this and you're not right. You're going to be in trouble. So... This is his label, all right? Y'all with it? <laughs> oh, Holy Spirit. <laughs> For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many asleep. Now, who's he talking to here? Church. The church, believers. So don't, don't think it can be anybody but you. Amen? So he knew this would be a problem in the church. You can take that twofold. That can depress you or it can encourage you because he made a way either way so that we can get right and partake of it, right? Amen. Either way, his goal was to get people in, not out. Right? Amen. If you're out, that's because you're choosing to this morning. Right. And so, how many want to be weak or sickly and any of those things? Now listen, I've seen people that I, I, I've done the same thing. And they've chosen not to heed, and they went ahead and done it. And for the next year, they were weak and sick. Just going to tell you. Not trying to scare you, because all they had to simply do when we give this time is they just had to get their hearts right. Are you with me? And the biggest thing that'll keep you in sin is this other sin called pride. Saying, I ain't got nothing wrong. He mustn't have my Kool Aid. Leave me alone. And you know how you can really tell because there's other sin called justification. And you start saying, well, I'm better than so-and-so. And then what we're going to be judged by is the Word of God. But here's the thing you're missing. Is God wants to bless you. He wants to pour into you this morning. I want to pour into you as your pastor. I, we want to have a glorious time this morning in the Lord. Amen? But I can't do that if you don't get yourself ready. Because I can't pour into something that God's saying, nope. Right? Y'all still with me? All right. So, but if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Now, how many want to uh, God to judge you? I don't really want Him to judge me. If He's telling you, I'm giving you the opportunity this morning to be your own judge, and you can uh, fix it before I do the judging. Amen. He says, but when we are judged, we are chastised of the Lord that we should not be condemned of the world. I want to bring home two things. Another one, if you don't judge yourself, he's going to chastise you. Just like any good daddy would. He'll give you a spanking. But listen, he said, so you should not be condemned of the world. He said, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to give you a spanking so that the world, you're not a laughing stock in front of the world and they're going to judge you even harsher. He's doing it so you'll correct yourself and get back under the blessings. Amen? Nothing wrong with correction, except for the whole world today, and most a lot of churches have said he doesn't do it no more, and right here we see that he will, but if you don't like correction like me, then you've got to get really good at judging yourself and keeping yourself in line, or else he'll help you. Right. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So, this morning... Before we get into our service uh, here in a little bit, we're going to uh, give you just a little bit of time here for long to uh, to do that. I'm going to look at this other verse here, John 19:30. Uh, That's so already quoted to you. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, "It is finished," and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. How many of you know he knew what he was finishing on the cross? 
So this morning, I want to tell you that whatever you have need of was finished there. And if you'll examine yourself, He will come into your life in a miraculous way this day and start correcting, correcting and restoring some things. Not because I said it, because He said His Word. Someone might say, well, I need some Scripture for that. And I'd be like, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> John 16, 33, the next verse down there says, These things I've spoken unto you, that you might have peace. Now, how many like peace? Amen. To me, it's becoming the most invaluable thing in my life. Now, most of the time when I was a younger Christian, I wanted peace and I wanted him to take me out of the situation. But I've learned the greatest peace comes to be when I can stay in the situation and it doesn't rock and roll me. And that's what he says here. He says, in the world, you shall have tribulation. Now, you know, I could have went all my life and never read that scripture. Now, I've been happy. But he said, be of good cheer. And I used to think, is he mocking or what here? <laughs> but see, he really realized what he had. He said, because I have overcome the world. See, when he said it's finished, he overcame everything in the world. Now, does that mean, now we have him in us. Now, we have that, but we have to apply it, right? That's what the word says. He said, say unto your mouth, if it be removed, cast to the sea. And with your mouth, right? And so this morning, though, you can invoke all those benefits that he's overcame when he said it's finished. If you'll just make sure your heart's right and then come boldly before the throne room of grace and whatever you have need of, ask him. Amen? Amen. I'm so glad that, listen, when I remember what he did for me, I usually get so choked up that I can't hardly talk. I mean, could you imagine going through what he went through? They said he should have been dead before he ever got on the cross. Yeah. He was beaten senseless. He was whipped, and mutilated, and then hung on that cross. And he did it with each one of us on his mind because he knew it was the only way that we could be saved. Amen. But he didn't just do it for eternal life. John 10.10, 10, he says, I've come, you may have life and have it more abundantly. That's here on earth right now. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them peace. That's what he said. In this troubled world, I'm going to give them hope in this troubled world, Romans 15.13. I'm going to give them joy. That's Romans 15, 13. In this troubled world. And when he said it is finished, he did all those things for you and me. And when we take of his body this morning, we can say, God, thank you so much that for what you did. I, Lord, thank you. I've got joy. I've got peace. I've got eternal life. God, I've overcome those things around me because what you did for me. Thank you, Lord. Are you all with me this morning? Do, do you feel it's a sacred time? It's a, it's a special time. And we're going to just uh, play a little music here in a moment. And... Uh, we're going to do whatever the Holy Ghost leads this morning. Uh, I'm not going to force anything, but we're going to have uh, people and families come up uh, one at a time. And uh, we're going to, it's going to be a long, probably a uh, procedure, but I don't believe you want to miss out. Uh, we're starting a new year, right? And so as your pastors this morning, me and Pastor Tammy, uh, we're going to come up each individual time and do communion with that individual. And then we're going to pray over them for the year. We're going to speak into their lives whatever God would say. He may not say anything. He may say a lot of things. It's not for me to say. I'm not God. Amen. And so uh, we, we really encourage you to partake in that. But it can take some time. Amen. So just be... Uh, just stay in the presence. If, if you all get out of the presence, it affects the presence up here. Amen. Amen. So uh, uh, let's play the Mercy Me song. And uh, then when we come up for uh, communion, we'll play the covenant uh, one. And uh, just take a moment this morning. I, I had a lot more, but... Uh, <coughs> But just examine your heart this morning. We're so glad you came. And listen, no one's forcing anybody to come do anything. It's a whosoever will. Uh, we love you. We're glad you're here. Uh, we don't do communion 24-7 because we do believe it's a very special time. And I hope that I've shared some things with you this morning that's invoked that same feeling in you. Amen.